Hello everyone, welcome to BWB TV. My name is Eden Turner, Senior Conference Producer at Informa Connect. I'm here today with Nandu Diokar, Vice President of Research and Development for the biopharma sector at Avantor. Thank you so much for joining us today, Nandu. Thank you, Eden. Lovely, so I'll start with the first question. Um, what role did raw materials and scientific equipment suppliers play in this historic acceleration of COVID-19 vaccines from research through to manufacturing? The suppliers played a significant role in the acceleration of this uh, overall uh, vaccine development timeline, not only from development, but through commercialization and <clears throat> supply to all around the world. So if you look at backward and the the vaccines, how technology has been developed over the decades, and uh, all the things happening is due to the convergence of science, technology, engineering, and supply chain. Uh, those, all those fields are required not only for discovery, development, and commercial manufacturing. The one of the main uh, things we know for all these vaccines are these are all based on the new technologies. And the new technologies have been proven in the lab for 10 years or even more. However, the, one of the challenge come in is the scale up. Since these are new technology, there is no established uh, route to do scale up. Mm. And the scale up challenges came from three separate areas. The first one is the raw materials. So all these new vaccines require sometimes current existing raw material, which need to be supplied in the quantities that needed. The second is needed some new raw materials. Those need to be scaled up, not only just scaled up, but to have the quality and consistency in them. When you are making hundreds of millions of dosage, uh, you have to be very, very consistent with the raw material. And that is even more critical because all these technologies are based on the very new uh, type of genetic uh, nucleic acid and the protein uh, molecules, which have significant impact due to impurity profile or due to anything happening in the raw material. And third, most important part is how do you scale up? So utilizing some of the new technologies like single use technologies to reduce the timeline for typically constructing a stainless steel plant will take. So the supplier played vital role in all these areas on the scale up of raw material, scale up of manufacturing technology, and finally distribution. So all these materials required to be distributed in a cold chain uh, fashion, and they need to go from one place to other place in a specific conditions. Those all things made, I think, raw material supplier and all the other suppliers an integral part of the overall process from discovery, development to uh, distribution of the vaccine. Thank you. Fantastic, thank you. And uh, in what way are raw material suppliers helping biopharma manufacturers implement uh, what the industry calls uh, Biopharma 4.0? So as we know, the uh, industry 4.0 is used in the many industries apart from biopharma. And the overall goal of the 4.0 is to use digital tools and electronic technologies to basically improve the process throughput, uh, make the processes more robust, reduce waste. And those are similar things applied to biopharma. The, one of the challenge the biopharma faces to, as they implement the biopharma 4.0 is the managing consistency of raw materials. Uh, typical biopharmaceutical process uses over hundreds of raw materials. And those hundreds of raw material goes, they used in the, as we know, different unit operation biopharma. So the question comes to how do you manage those raw materials? Traditionally, uh, the biopharma industry purchases the raw material, does characterization, testing, and then release and determine whether to use or not. The way uh, the supplier helping the biopharma industry to implement the biopharma uh, 4.0 is to fully characterize the raw material, 
then supplying the data, electronic data, e-data format to uh, the manufacturer. So before the raw material show up, uh, the electronic data with all the characterization and CFA comes in. And uh, typically the process would have digital twin of the process. So digital twin is the one of the concept developed where you can run the process digitally. So the manufacturer will use that raw material data put in their model and the model is okay, this raw material looks good, we can accept it and proceed forward. So that way you reduce uh, all the work. The second is about delivery of this raw material. So many of the companies are providing right now, including Avanta, ready to use, uh, ready to dispense uh, raw material. So those come in a, in a format that way that directly can be added to the reactors. So that we reduce the timing in-house and reduce the waste. So overall goal is to look at the entire value chain of the biopharma and see how which steps creates a more wasteful product or how more uh, uncertainty around it. And then use biopharma 4.0 concepts such as digitization, electronic data, process modeling, uh, AI driven analysis, uh, to implement, to remove all the uncertainty around the biopharma manufacturing. Thanks. Brilliant, thank you. And uh, what are your thoughts on at what point in the process of developing a new biologic should the manufacturer uh, get in a uh, partner with their raw material supplier? I think it's very important for the any biologic manufacturer to involve a supplier of any critical material or critical things as early as possible. Uh, I can give some example how simple things uh, can create a more challenging uh, for the biopharmaceutical manufacturing. So as you are in the lab, you basically are using few grams or hundreds of grams of material in the lab. And you may make few uh, batches or few uh, runs in the lab and you characterize it, everything looks fine. And a lot of times people will buy a different lots of raw material and they'll say, okay, this came from different lots. However, from supplier, they may come from the one parent lot. So you might not have diversity of data that needed. If we engage with the supplier, you can actually request and get the diversity of raw material lot early on if not very early, at least in the late stage of critical development, definitely in phase one for all the critical material. And as you move along, you know, phase one, phase two, phase three, um, by the time phase three comes, like every raw material, uh, you should know good about what the consistency is. One of the example I'll give you, so people in the uh, early stage, they will use some of the hydrated salt. So heptahydrate, decahydrate, in, because in the lab, they might be available. However, as you go to manufacturing side, all those hydrated material creates a challenge of using them in a manufacturing process. Uh, another issue could be, is good, it's maybe not that critical if you are using the raw material that is you already have experience with or used in some other process, but if there is a raw material you don't have experience with. It is not in a biopharma process before. It is better to get involved uh, so that the material can be made in a proper regulatory standard, either GMP or you know, compendial manner or whatever is needed, because it takes almost years to get any material scaled up, developed, and have available to be used in a biopharmaceutical process. So my suggestion is to use as soon as possible if not sooner, definitely by phase one. Brilliant, thank you. And uh, yeah, we, we spoke a little bit about the um, COVID-19 earlier and uh, how else do you think uh, the mRNA technology that was applied can look beyond infectious diseases? What else do you think it can be applied to? I think it definitely can be applied to uh, beyond infectious disease. MRNA technology, if you look at the scientifically and technically how it works, it basically produces the protein in the body. So it, the typically in biopharma industry, when we look at the bio 
molecules, we produce the protein outside of the body in the either by reactor or by fermentation in E. coli bacteria. And those proteins are then injected into people to uh, have therapeutic effect. Now, if you can use the mRNA to use the human body as typical bioreactor, and then that mRNA will produce any protein that you want to produce outside. Definitely, there are many challenges that to be overcome. Uh, as we know, the mRNA technology has accelerated over last year for COVID-19. However, it has been used in development for uh, many, many years. I mean, since I remember, since early 90s, people have been looking at preclinical or clinical studies of mRNA vaccine. There are two challenges has to overcome uh, for the mRNA to be used in a, in a broader than infectious disease. One is the ability to deliver mRNA to typical cells that you want that protein to be produced. And there are many, many uh, advances have been made on the delivery of mRNA and delivery of specifically nucleic acid to specific cell. There are ways you can make lipid nanoparticle with uh, some of the receptor on it so that the mRNA is get delivered to the one specific cells. As long as you deliver the mRNA one specific cells, the cell machinery will do its job to produce the, any protein that you have encoded that mRNA to produce. And if you make that protein in the body, then it can work as good as other protein. And so I think there are few years down the road, we'll see a lot more progress made uh, for mRNA for other diseases as well. Yeah, that's great. That's so exciting though, isn't it? That, that yes, might it's, be very, it's very exciting in the sense yeah. uh, the many, many uh, things that will happen. I think that uh, this will, many, among many technologies, mRNA technology will uh, revolutionize the personalized medicine. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And uh, I'm just going to throw quite a broad question at you now. Um, what else do you think is, is on the horizon that's going to shape the future of, of medicine um, and, and a healthier world? What's, uh, what's Avanto looking at? Yeah. So um, has COVID-19 has proven one thing, the, the any technology has been development, particularly in medical healthcare field, it takes time to mature it. Uh, COVID-19 uh, luckily mature few technologies quite well, quite fast, because we have done grand experiment and uh, there are great collaboration happened between the globally uh, regulatory agencies, the companies and the government alike. And that created a tremendous uh, bandwidth in the scientific world. So I think there are few areas that are in the same uh, horizon as the mRNA. So if you look at the cell and gene therapy, uh, gene editing technology, uh, use of stem cell technology for transplantation, uh, those are the few areas uh, along with uh, some of the, the liver and transplant, organ transplant, making organ in the uh, organ in outside of the body and then transplanting them using stem cell technology. Those are the things on the horizon, I think, would make every bit of difference uh, in the world for to make the every patient and everybody who's suffering to mu much more beneficial to buy this technology. At Avantar, I think we're looking at all of those things and we have created a program. Avantar has a mission is that we help people discover uh, develop and commercialize. So we're looking at all through areas how our scientific discovery and supporting the science positively impact the overall the world uh, from say medicine uh, to broader healthcare needs. Fantastic. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you, Eden. I've been Eden Turner with Informa Connect interviewing Nandu Diyoko, Vice President of Research and Development for the Biopharma Sector at Avanto. This has been BWB TV. Thank you so much. Thank you.